But also just realizing we got into a random person's car. Yeah. That is Sometimes like what your we... parents tell you <laughs> not to do. That's exactly what we did. We had no idea where we were going. Uh, yeah. Silly, 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 silly. <laughs> I wanted to start out the day and get a, what's called a frikasse, but they're only ready in 20 minutes, so. Okay. A little bit later. A slimmer to the town of Hammamet. So Hammamet has its history traced back to hundreds and hundreds of years ago, where it acted as a strategic stronghold almost. There's a fort just down in the harbour. Also, this town is very noisy as well. That's one thing that we have noticed. It acted as a stronghold for hundreds of years, much like the town that we went to the other day called Sidi Bou Said. And even as recently as in World War II, where a general came and set up his base here in Hamanet. But today, it's not known for being... You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is not even the busy season. But today it's not known for being a strategic stronghold, but rather just a beach resort town. And we can't testify to that because we went on the we went for a run on the beach yesterday and it is absolutely stunning. We were casually walking down the street and this guy popped up out of nowhere and pretty much shaped our entire experience in Hammamet. Here's how it all went down. Wow. So, so it's like a whole festival down there now. Right. Where Today they're making we can wool and argan oil and we can see the Berber woman. In the spaces. Yes. Yeah, and everything you can make some picture, why not? You know? We're going this way. And have we been here before or not? No. You are first time in Hanuman? Yes. First time. Come on, I bring you with my car. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you. I am your guide for free. When I come to South Africa, he will hit me. Oh, yes, yes. What's your name? My name is Sarah. Ha Hassan. Hassan. Marek. Marek. Nice to meet you. My wife from German. I stay only three months in Tunisia, nine months in England. Really? Because I work translator and outside for Tunisia now. Everybody here, we live three religions. We live Muslim, yeah. Catholic, Christian, and Jude. Okay. Here the Muslim people, he will go five times in the day in the mosque. One time in the morning, three times in the afternoon, and one time in the night. You understand my English or not? Yes, yeah, it's yes. Yeah, very good. I am your guide, but not for money. I don't <laughs> want money. When I come to South Africa, he will help me. Of course. Uh, yes. We can look to look after I show you what is it. Now we go to the Medina, but not to risk Medina, our big Medina. Ah, normal Yeah. So this is the normal Medina, not the tourist Medina. This is a more authentic one then. Yes. Here's the color you find the blue and white. Blue for the mustard and the white for the sun. Why we said the blue for the mustard? Because the blue is the color for the sea. When the mustard sees sea, sea, the blue he means the sea in the way. Okay. Now you work to there and you go be back. You go you, you go there and you be back. Okay. okay. Come on, I said, you white, please, Mr. No, you! Not you! White. Ah. <laughs> when you marry, she take twins. Secret. Yeah. <laughs> Go back, please. Can you say that quickly again? Good twins. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ask. I like that one. I like it. We'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> you don't listen to us? Ah, you didn't hear anything, did you? Nothing. <laughs> this is the spaces. This is now the festival where the old man will speak to you about our community, carpet, marine carpet and everything. He will give you Berber tea to drink, but you don't give him money. It's tradition day. Like I come in the house, you give me something to drink, I don't live on your own, you know. It's tradition, yeah. This is the argan oil, olive oil, cactus oil and maknozi oil, yeah. 
And this is here how to make these spices. The best thing what you buy in Tunisia is fresh spices, but not the package clothes that you see in the yes. shops. Mm -hmm. This is no good, you know. You must fresh, you must smile. Mm. Mm. Okay. And this is here how to make the couscous. Smell, please. Yeah. Mm. This is a good spices, you know. Yes, now, later, not in the Medina, because in the tourist shop, where is a little bit way, I will bring you to make some picture, how they make, how you smell this spices and what mm -hmm. information. Now, give me your hand, please. Okay. Give me your hand, please. Close the eyes, and you hope something for him, and he hopes that you, what, you know what you hope you. Okay, stop. This is the hand for Fatima. Fatima is the daughter for our Prophet Muhammad. One hand is mean one family. Two hand mean two family. Why we can live two family together? Because you find lot of houses not finished. Do you know why? Because when you go on the bank in South Africa, bank can give you credit. Mm. In Tunisian too, bank he can give credit. But for the Russian Muslim, Pratican people, he goes to the mosque five times a day. Mm -hmm. The God, he said no. You give me 100 euro, I can give you 100 euro, 110 euro back. I must give you 100 euro back. The 10 euro commission is no good for our religion. But many people, they do slowly, slowly. I have money here, I do what I don't have, I stop. Yes, yes. And send that I mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Very good. Hey, English, English is, is very, very, very good. I speak ten languages. Wow, ten what? languages. Which yeah. which languages? I speak English, a little bit English, French, German, uh, Hollandish, Spanish, Spanish, Russian, Arabic, and Turkish. Wow. I think I don't know what that is. What is that? Is that okay. jasmine? Open your hand, please. Mm. As is your present, smell. Ah. When you go to hotel, uh, you put this in your room. Mm. You close the room. You go drink something, and you back, and you have nice smell. Wow! What do you think so far? It's really cool. It's really authentic, and it's just. It's just such a cool experience. This is not the touristy side. So there's no shop selling souvenirs, you know, there's no people trying to get you into their stores to buy things. It's just a normal place. It's kind of like when we were in Kotor, in the fortress there. It was just where people stay, and that's exactly what this place is. It's like a fortress type Medina place that's overlooking the sea over here, and it's just really cool. It's authentic, and it's as real as it gets, really. Thank you. Look please, Sarah, we come back here mm -hmm. to see souvenirs, how to make it. The souvenirs and he explain to you the, the, the tradition and how the, uh, what is mean, you know. Okay. Now well, we go see Homamed, but for upstairs. Mm. The panorama. What you do in the life? Uh, we've been traveling for two years. Yeah. Um, but otherwise construction. Yeah. Sarah's happy. Yes, thank you, Hassim. Hassan. Hassan. It's tradition. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, here real dresses, Tunisian dresses for, for lady. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here we have this all from camel leather. Camel leather? Yeah, camel, yes, from camel. Oh, wow. Yes, camel leather. Touch, you can see. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, all over the hand. Yeah. And to make here uh, something like this spices, spice. Oh, yes, oh. and we have the silver. You know how to mean the pat the pattern is the tattoo from Berber lady. Really? Berber. Tattoo wife. Mm. You can so. So the pattern is based on like Berber woman's the tattoos. Tattoo Oh, and look, wow. this pattern, this is the direction of Hamame. Yeah. Uh, leave your shoes and look the quality. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. That's very soft. Yeah, you know how heavy? 300 grams. After a small packet like this. 
We just got our Berber tea. And because it's festival and it's a celebration. It's a celebration of Tunisia and tourism in Tunisia and the traditions. We got a nice cup of Berber tea. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think about it? Wow. Oh, that's very good. This tea is like that. I'll speak mm -hmm. to you later after. Mm -hmm. How do you make it? Smell, please. Whoa! What is that? What do you drink? Oh, that's oh, like that's lemon and everything. Yeah. That smells amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It smells like lemongrass. You must be careful in the Medina, in old city. If somebody sell you the Berber uh, package, uh, spices, package spices, don't buy it because the spices is must be fresh. Okay. Like you smell outside you and spices here and you smell it there, you know mm. what? Because this is handmade Berber things. Come on, please. Give me your hand. Sorry. Eat. Oh. Eat it. Yeah, eat it. The chili. Yeah, eat it. Yo. <laughs> Please don't angry, don't angry. I'll give you something else. Is it hot? Is it gonna be is it gonna build? <laughs> what kind of spice you like? I like the spice, the yeah, meat one. Look, maybe you find other souvenirs. Uh, mm -hmm. Close the camera, I make you Tunisian dresses and make photo and we go. Wow! I don't see Oh uh, yeah. If you put it like this, yeah. you can see. Everything good, hand for hand, please. <laughs> yeah, I hope for you a good holidays with good Peter Chinder, <laughs> and you are married now in Tunisia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we don't have to learn how much you know. We don't travel on your Look, look, maybe we have more. No, I know that's how much we've got. For the spa? Yeah, 50. 50 for the, they don't have that much, I'm sorry. That's just, it just makes me question everything. Doesn't it doesn't make you do that? Because like, did he always have the intention of taking us into that shop? Yeah, he told us from the beginning he was going to take us to a shop. So is that what he does? Does he just drive around and look for random tourists holding a camera and then say, hey, let me show you around. Let me take you to this place. Let me take you to this place. Oh, and then I'm also actually going to take you to the shop where this guy's going to show you how to make spices. He's going to give you some berber tea. And then he's also going to say, come, we'll make a good price. We'll give you the best price for this. We'll give you the best price for that. And try to sell you things. But also tell you that he's not going to expect payment for this tour. Well, I honestly, because somewhere along that walk, I said to you, I'd like to give him a donation because he was driving us around, he took us all over, gave us a proper tour. And I said to you, 20. I said to you I wanted to give him 20. And effectively we did because we paid 20 for those spices. So I feel like you can't expect to go around and just have people give you stuff for free and I like even though he kept saying it's for free it's for free it's for free I knew in my mind that I wanted to give him something and I just feel like we did because we paid 20 dinar and they clearly there's a friendship there they know each other they probably work together and yes like you say there probably is some sort of system where they he looks, uh, is on the lookout for tourists, and maybe if he sees a tourist, then he and pops out his friend. Because yeah. maybe that's his shop. It, he said he, he has shops. He says he's got shops. That's maybe so, his shop. I don't know. I think we got off pretty lucky, though. Pretty I, lucky. I feel like... Uh, we, like we have two different... So, so <sighs> we have two different things. I do have that underlying feeling of, like, feeling like someone's tricked me, and it's not a nice feeling. But at the same time... 
And just coming to the realization that as a tourist visiting a country, we can't expect to just be given everything for free or whatever. We have to give something back when he gave us like two hours of his time. See, but then, so for but me... But you would rather him be upfront about it from the beginning. So for me, that whole thing is just a ploy. You know, he, he softens you up. He like, he like butters you up almost in a sense. He gives you this amazing toy. He takes you into a shop where this guy says he's a Berber and he's very sweet and kind and he shows you around his entire shop saying how they make things and then they just want to give you stuff afters and say best price, best price, best price. And I mean, we almost paid 110 dinar for two little ma what? Magnets. Magnet, magnet cups and some spice. So Sarah's got the positive view of it. I've got the negative view of it, seeing that the whole thing was just an act. And with most people who's, who travels using the euros, because they kept on telling us, yeah, just convert it to euros, convert it to euros. And you do, it's not much, but for us, euros is still a lot of money. Um, so when you get like a wealthy, I don't know, German tourist or a Dutch tourist or a French tourist coming here, and then they put all these things in front of you and say, look, in euros, it's not much. To them, it's not much, but to us, it is a lot. It still is, yeah. It's still a lot. We're traveling at a very limited budget at the moment, and to just be splashing out money for things that we didn't plan or things that we don't necessarily need um, will be a bit of a waste, really. But either way, we still share two different opinions. It's cool, though. It's cool that we get to discuss these things. Um, I'm not feeling particularly great after that. I still don't have a very nice feeling, but I feel ready to carry on with our day. I think yeah. it's mostly due to the fact that I'm very hungry. It is one o'clock and we haven't eaten yet, so I'm grumpy. <sighs> and um, I know once I have food, I'll feel a whole lot better and ready to carry on with our day. I don't feel hard done by because I wanted to give him 20 dinar. That was in my mind already. We've come away with some spice and a very awesome tour of like two hours all over Hammamet, so. And, and with that as well, we don't know if any of the facts that he told us was true. So if you're Tunisian or even just, if you just know about the history of Hammamet, please can you just confirm? We have no reason to doubt it, but we Maybe, just don't know. I've just got a little bit of a doubt in my mind with all the stories he told Maybe us. Maybe we have a reason to doubt <laughs> it because we I've got tricks. a bit of a reason because he told yeah. us about his family, he told us about what he does, where he lives, and he told us all of those things. So I've just got a bit of a doubt in my mind now. So if you are Tunisian, if you're from here, please just confirm or deny if any of the facts that he told us is correct. Let's go get a frikassi. Yeah, yum! <laughs> but on another fact, on another note, just look at where we're standing there. The place is stunning. It really, really is stunning. There's little children playing soccer here. In the park almost, the there's palm is, trees. The reality is, everyone's got their grind, everyone's got their thing that they've got to do to make it in this life. And we have just got to become more streetwise. And yeah, at the end of the day, I don't feel like we were too hard done by. So let's go find some nice food and carry on. But also just realizing we got into a random person's car. Yeah. That is it's like what your parents <laughs> tell you not to do. That's exactly what we did. We had no idea where we were going. Uh, yeah. Silly, 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 silly. <laughs> Oh, we even got blue party lights. <laughs> right, let's try these things. Excuse the noise. Yeah. We've got a busy street just down below. This is what we're talking about. This place is noisy. The city. All right. So what we have got is something called a frikasse, which is pretty much like all our South Africans will know this one. It looks exactly like a fit book. So it's well, a not deep exactly. <laughs> It's got a different shape. Yeah. It's got a different shape, but it's the same principle as a fat book. So it's pretty much just a deep fried dough, dough ball, really. Sliced, covered with, oh, this is the part that we struggle with, this red sauce that you can see. Harissa. It's called harissa, which is a spicy paste. So it's got harissa, 
it's got mashed potatoes, it's got eggs, it's got olives, and it's got a little bit of tuna sprinkled oh. on the top. Ready, cheers. Yeah, that's quite good. I do feel like the first part is mostly dough though. Mm. It takes a while. I don't know. Mm. I love it. That's what it is. Yo! I just destroyed my tooth on an olive pit. Yeah, olive pit, be mm, careful. I really like this. I didn't think I would because of the tuna, but yo, it's just really good. I'm just getting olive pips in everything. Mm, and he gave us the option of not so spicy. Yeah. So it's actually not spicy at all. Mm. I'm not getting any spice. But a har harissa is one of those things that um, catches up with you the next day. <laughs> if you know what I mean. We so. learned that the hard way. <laughs> so just um, when people offer you harissa, just use it with caution. Yeah, but um, this has been Hammamet, a day that we were not expecting at all. We thought we were just going to go for a walk by ourselves through the town, show you the beaches, show you the Medina. We were not expecting to go on the roller coaster of a ride that we did have. <laughs> it, was, it was cool though. We still need to learn how to get better to recognize these situations. But I have no regrets. Yeah, no regrets. It made the day. Mm. It's going to give us an unforgettable experience here in Hammamet. Um, but that actually sounds us off for our time in Hammamet as well. Tomorrow we're going out with some friends. We're going pretty much back to Tunis again. Um, and we'll be hiking up a few mountains. Mm. And another thing as well is that for all the rest of our time in Tunisia, we most likely will not be flying a drone. This is something yeah. that we learned a couple of days ago that you're actually not allowed to take a drone into Tunisia. We don't know how we managed to get it through the airport. They usually take it off of you at the airport mm. and for some reason they let us through with our drone. So for the interest of keeping safe and keeping our drone, we will not be flying it <laughs> from this moment forward. Mm. We're not prepared to part ways with it. Mm -hmm. Enough rambling. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.